Hi, Jill. Thank you for joining me on the Courage Movement. Choose Courage Movement. Oh, I'm so excited to be here, Terry. I have been following your work for years now, and it was just such an honor to have you reach out and ask me to join you. So I'm thrilled to talk about courage. I'm so glad because you are a person that lives it and has been able to use your experiences and help other people be more courageous as well, which I might have given it away already with some of the questions I want to ask you. <laughs> so, so first of all, just explain to the audience a little bit more about you. Absolutely. So um, I, I love to introduce myself as, uh, well, as Jill, the holistic health nurse, I've been a nurse for 30 some years now, and it's a great way to introduce myself because it is who I am. I love being a nurse. I've been a nurse since 83. And so I, my work um, continues to take me in the direction of holistic health nursing. So first and foremost, I am a nurse. Um, I also am a coach. I'm a health and recovery coach. And I work with women in recovery from alcohol use disorder and other dysfunctional habits or patterns. And that is just so rewarding, uh, that, that kind of work. And last but not least, I'm a bioenergetic practitioner. So I work with people to help them uh, balance their energy, um, assess, and then uh, align their energy. And it's a very exciting time. Uh, in in uh, health, holistic health at this point, because the technology is finally catching up with what we've already known all along with traditional Chinese medicine. So that work has been really exciting. So um, my overall practice is called Jill Rathburn Coaching. And I must share, I too am a woman in recovery from alcohol use disorder. Oh, Jill. Wow. What a story. What a journey. And what a gift your knowledge and wisdom and your passion um, is helping um, giving back to so many people. And I, your story, I knew a little bit about, and that's why I really wanted to share it with everyone, because what you're doing is you're, to me, looking from the outside in is that you, you're, you're looking at the whole person and with a person you had, you had the um, holistic um, I guess, viewpoint or mindset um, mm -hmm. as a nurse, and you have both the medical and the holistic way of looking at things. But then you went on and did more uh, training so that you could look at other ways to help people in recovery, or, or trauma, right, or, or in any kind of change in their life. And, and as I, I'm a coach, too, and I know yeah. that there's all these different pieces that make someone whole. And you are looking at the whole person. And I love that you've been through this journey yourself. You've been through recovery and you brought yourself to full health with all the tools that you have and that you learn. So I'm, I've also been you know, working with you a little bit too on that bioenergetic program, which is super cool. Yeah. So now I know um, we have so much to talk about today, but what I, the first question I want to ask you, and again, I want to ask you this in a new moment in time, right now. Do you see yourself as courageous? Oh, absolutely. I absolutely see myself as courageous. And the interesting thing is I didn't until I started looking at your work. And this really started back in 20. Uh, 15 or so when I filled out the survey for the 100 hearts. Yes, you were part of the book, 100 hearts, Joe. Right. Yes. Right. And I was really struggling. I was in active addiction at that point. Um, and uh, and I, I, I definitely did not myself see myself as courageous at that point because I was at a low of a low moment. But in, in reflection and in preparation for chatting with you today, it's really been interesting for me to think about where I gained my courage. And it just didn't start in recovery for me. Mm. It really started, honestly, at the beginning when I, in childhood, <laughs> surprise, where surprise. it all <laughs> starts. Wow, I love this. I <laughs> love this, Jill. Right, where it all starts. And I, I, want to just share that I grew up in, uh, in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, which is a very conservative, somewhat male dominated 
very Christian oriented community. I mean, this is where the Amish settled. Um, and uh, I, I grew up in an area that did not manifest, was, was trying to stifle me and people like me. I um, mean, it was in the seventies. So, well, I was born in 61, but I really got uh, a hold of my growing up years in the seventies and the women's movement was taking hold. And of course I was aware of that. And anytime I expressed any t- type of interest in this, it got squashed. Yeah. Um, and, and so I really was, a fish swimming upstream, going against the grain. And I also was grow, grew, grew up in a household that was very unhappy, very dysfunctional. Um, uh, in a very, basically, I, I went through three divorces um, be in, in a short, relatively short period of time. So I was very aware of the unhappiness going on with the adults in my life. And I, so that strength to always put the game face on, um, and that strength to know that my time would come to be able to manifest what I was looking for and dreaming of, and that life seeker in me, um, (laughs) that was building courage then. And so I want to just honor that, that young girl and that teenage girl, because, what was building courage then came back and and helped me in spades when I was going through my recovery. Wow. Um, so it wasn't just like, voila, I was exactly. able to pull courage out of yes. that. I really, what was, you know, what what were some tough moments growing up was building strength, building resilience, building courage. Mm-hmm. And so Um, You know, but you don't stop and think, oh, I'm building courage because especially with women, as you know, we're not taught we're building courage. No, no. (laughs) not at at all. That's not even a word that we're used to. I mean, that's not we were even that we even talked about. Right, right. So it really was enjoyable for me to really reflect on where this all began, because let me tell you where I thought it began. And that's in my early career. Um, So uh, that's where I thought my courage began, but no, it began earlier. But in my early career, I did start a business uh, with my husband that took a lot of courage. But even before that, um, I got into pharmaceutical sales as a nurse, which was really unusual. And I can remember being petrified to go on my first sales call. (laughs) <laughs> and my sales trainer was so amazing with me. And he just kept saying, just relax, just be yourself. You're a natural born salesperson. And, and I just overcoming that fear was, was, was all about courage. Yes. And so that is actually where I thought it began, but it really, it, it percolated earlier. And as my life carried on, I kept filling the courage bucket. So then when I, as I say, I really needed it, it was there for me. Um, and we great. can talk about that if you'd yes. like. Yes. Oh, I would. I would. I absolutely do. And, and what your story so far has been so fascinating to me because in all my research I've done now on courage mm-hmm. and, and hearing all, a lot of different people's viewpoints and, and their definition of courage in their own life is exactly what you just said. A lot of people don't see it the past as that they were courageous, you know, more you know, later on, something big happened, they can identify with that. But really, we have been demonstrating courage for a long time, by always, you know, keep going, overcoming obstacles and continuing to to persist and keep going. Where I think as women, we just think, oh, you know, we have to do it all, we have to do it well. So if we struggled, that wasn't courageous. That means we just had to get through it. That was just something right. we had to get through, but that wasn't mean that doesn't mean I'm strong or, or resilient. And when, when <laughs> yes. you start to see it, like I was strong, I was resilient, I was courageous. It's it's like a muscle, it starts to build upon itself. And then yes. you really need it. Like you're saying, when you really got to that defining time in your life, it was where you need it the most, which you're going to tell us about this story and this transition yeah. in your life. Right. You knew you were courageous at somewhere inside of you that you had been courageous many, many times. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, although I wasn't thinking I was so courageous at the time, but yes, yes. my, um, my relationship with alcohol deteriorated starting in my forties. Uh, and I won't go, uh, into the, the full story. Um, if you are interested in the full story though, it is actually now on my website because I was just interviewed recently and I, 52 minutes of my full story. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, good. So yeah, we'll make so sure Jill that everybody Rathburn, has that. Yeah. So <laughs> jillrathburn.com in the media section. Uh, so I, but my alcohol use uh, progressed like it does with, well, frankly, everyone. Um, it's, it, it's rare to nearly um, non-existent to wake up one, you know, one day after having one drink and have an alcohol problem. No, this is a progressive disease, which is why they call it alcohol use disorder. It is a wow. disorder over time. Yeah. And it starts mild to moderate to severe. And I definitely progressed, but I didn't recognize it as being a significant problem until it was very severe, which is also common. And the reason is because women often don't present like a stereotypical person with uh, alcoholism. Um, mm-hmm. I could not identify with that. I was, as Terry knows, I was running a very successful retail store on Main Street, raising a family. We were very close. I was as spinning instructor doing triathlon. Yes, you're very very active. yes. Yeah. you hit it and, very well, very well. And all these other things. Yeah. Right. And then on top of that, I was immersed in the holistic health community of Park City, which is very robust. Um, it, it, Park City is a very special place uh, between the Olympic athletes and, and um, all the cutting edge holistic health to keep those athletes functioning um, a full throttle, as well as all of us that are just interested in health. I was immersed with these people. These were my friends. And so I so hit it until I couldn't any longer. And ultimately, um, I, it was a very dark, dark place to be. The last year or so is very isolating. And yeah. I just didn't see a way out, a very dark place. And it took all the courage honestly, that I could possibly um, muster to go into inpatient rehab. And I did do that in August of 2016, which is just a year after you and I were working together. Yes. Um, yes. Which is, again, not uncommon um, for people with alcohol issues. We go full throttle in other projects thinking that will help. But then when those projects are over and we come back to the drinking, then whoo, all bets are off. And you put menopause on top of that yes. as well as it was honestly in my epigenetics and genetics, meaning mm-hmm. I was predisposed genetically and my early adverse childhood events really set me up for addictive behavior later. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, go, I went into rehab and, um, uh, and just the whole process of early recovery, it every day is about courage because the cliche of one day at a time, it is one day at a time, wow. um, uh, because this is a world where alcohol is held at very high regard. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not saying that people with other addictions don't also have significant difficulty making adjustments because they do, but alcohol is unique in that it is an accepted addictive drug in our society. It is. And it it, is. Yeah. And since it's everywhere and my memories were, you know, of, With of these, these moments, right? Right. Yes. I just, couldn't see a path forward. So you really do li- live one day at a time and focus on here and now and focus on the present moment, working on mind, body, spirit, rebuilding from the inside out. Like it's you said, total, it's like a, it's like a total transformation. Total. And every total. So that talk, so where did you feel like you found your strength or yeah. Growth? And well, that, that sounds like one of the hardest moments that anybody could go through. There's so many, but that takes tremendous amount. Just first of all, of courage, just to acknowledge it 
and then actually go through the process of dealing with it. Yes. Handling yeah. It. Um, you know, there were, like I mentioned, the daily, the daily grind of early recovery yes. um, is all about courage. But then there were some milestones when I really realized that I had, um, I was turning my pain into my superpower. And that is, I mean, that is, you need courage to do that. Yes, to make those it is. Leaps. So one in particular was I, 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 I basically signed up um, I, to go to India with um, my, my recovery coach, Tommy Rosen of Recovery 2.0, highly recommend his program. And you needed to be nine months sober to go to India. And, and, I, and we were going to study yoga. And this was just had my name on it, but I had to be nine months. So I signed up when I was about four months and it, it just locked me into that goal and locked in my courage. Isn't that fantastic? Yeah. So you had something to look forward to and a reason to stay sober and to really to continue so you could go to India. Right. But that's a courage too, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> so yes. So I mean, you, yeah. I had, I, it was, I'm, I can't even almost explain it because when I was a young, young person, I loved traveling and I never minded going to cities um, by myself. And I even traveled abroad um, with a friend in my early twenties. But as I got older, I had this fear. It was, uh, well, the flip side coin of courage about going other places. And so, yes, I got on a flight all by myself. I knew no one else that was going except um, the leader of our group. Um, and I went to essentially a third world country, you know, <laughs> and somebody was picking me up and driving me like, which was like, <gasps> I, I, you know, my sister did warn me what driving was like in a third world country. And it was just um, when I finally got there and checked in, which is also, you know, it's not a normal hotel, people. This is like an oh. ashram. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And um, when I finally got to my modest little bed <laughs> in my freezing room, I was like, I've made it, you know, <laughs> and it was sheer courage that sure, took me sure. there, sheer you? courage. So that is truly, you know, plant the flag on that one. Um, and then another big plant the flag was when. I realized that I was so excited about my recovery actually in India. Whew, that was a transformation. Yes. Um, that's another podcast. Yes, it is. We're going to continue. We have so much to talk about. And, yeah. yeah. Um, so, but I decided to get into coaching. I, and I, I wanted to really focus on health uh, yes. because I saw that there was a lot of recovery coaches that were focused on sobriety, which is essential, obviously. Yes. But nobody was really focused on health and holistic health. And I knew my passion um, in that area. And so anyway, I just got all excited. I saw the vision. And, and so I, um, I, 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 as you know, I took a professional coaching course, ICF certified um, and 120 hours and you know, started figuring all this out. It takes a lot to do that. Yeah. Very now that was education. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Now that was not the courage part. That was the fun part. The Good. courage part was, is I had to announce essentially to the world that I was in recovery. So you have to understand, yes. like, I was absolutely keeping yeah. this under the radar yes. um, because sadly, there still is some shame associated with addiction. Um, and so, I, I mean, I joke and say, you know, it's not like I'm going to put it on Facebook. <laughs> and that's exactly what I did. I thought, go big or go home. Oh. I'm going to take a page out of Park City. Yes. Um, you know, I think that is probably what a huge message I hope that everyone takes away from today is that you sharing that vulnerable part of yourself yes. really released you and you're now living, doing exactly what you're passionate about and you're helping other people and you're transforming people's life, but you're making people not feel alone. And yes. you're, they're looking at you like, wow, if she can talk about this and do what she loves to do from this and start helping people and transforming people because of what she's been through, maybe I can too. 
Exactly. Maybe I can too. Oh, that was beautiful. Yes. So yes. Um, so I want, term, I, yes. Well, I was just gonna say there's a term for that. And basically what it's called is recovering out loud. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So beautiful. Because, yeah. And it's a, it's a movement recovering out loud. And so people will say, oh, I've been in recovery, but I, um, I recovered out loud on such and such. And so oh, in other oh. words, it's, Okay, Jill, we have, we kind of have to wrap it up on this because I, but we're going to, we're going to have to continue this conversation, sure, but sure. recovering out loud. I want to just like end it on that note uh, yes. and, and, and maybe have you give one more, you know, you know, closing thought or wisdom from you, but recovering out loud. I just love that so much for everyone listening. It's, it's almost like you're claiming where you're at and what you want to mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. And it's not like you're being this victim on this side of it. It's claiming this is, this is, I'm going to be empowered by this. I'm going to take control of this. I'm choosing mm -hmm. to identify what's happening and I'm going to move forward. Absolutely. I don't know if that's, is that the right definition? Uh, you, you, you crushed it. That's exactly <laughs> okay. what it is. Good. It's, it's taking control of um, the narrative. Yes. And we, in recovery, it, it's somewhat like our hero's story or the hero's journey where the adventure goes off and then there's a, a, a big, um, a big dramatic fall yes. and we got to pick ourselves back up and keep going. And that picking ourselves up and keep going, that's the transformation. That's the recovering out loud. Wow, and it's really, it's been my greatest, um, you know, I couldn't, I, I couldn't have planned for a greater opportunity in life to grow and to exhibit courage and to do my part in humanity. And you are, uh, and, and I, I can't thank you enough for sharing your amazing, amazing story of courage. And I know that this story and you sharing it with me today and our audience is going to change so many people because there's addi addictions, not just alcohol. And that's a mm. big one out there. There's so many other addictions. And if you want to be whole, then you need to look at these things. And so um, reach out to Jill. Jill, how can they get a hold of you? Yes, exactly. Jill Rathburn dot com. And that my email is Jill at Jill dot com. And my number is 435-729-0996. Please reach out for any reason at any time. I'd love to hear from you. And Terry, thank you so much for inviting me. You're and we so can do welcome. a take two. <laughs> yes, we're going to have take two very soon because we just got started. And thank you. I absolutely enjoyed our conversation today. Yeah, and I've had a lot of things work. that I'm taking away from it. Yeah. So thank you so much. Thank All right. You, you have Karen. a great day. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye.